Hello and have a good day. I hope everything is fine in your world. Here is a, a tutorial about mathematics and textures. Let me say it's about the beauty of textures with a little bit of maths. When you deal with a ramp, for example, and we won't use a ramp right here. This is a ramp. It goes from black to white. You would typically typically uh, expect that you see that ramp somewhere in, in a texture, for example. So you have uh, an object which is exactly looking like this plate here, uh, and it goes from black to white or from black to red, whatever you choose here. But uh, in many, 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 many cases, you use a ramp for things where you don't actually see that ramp. For example, if you if that would be the uh, polygon plane and you have a UV mapping in two directions, you could use the, this ramp for the bump mapping. So the bump would be very harsh here and slightly fading and here the plane would be totally flat and unbumpy. So you wouldn't see that black to white ramp in that case, but you would see uh, something else where the ramp works indirectly. And the ramp basically is a mathematical function. Similar to this one. You maybe remember that from school or if you're more experienced with animation, of course, if this is a day to day thing. Uh, this is the sine curve. It goes like this. In the default setting, so to say, it goes from plus 1 to minus 1, which would be here. All the time, this is a plus 1, this is a minus 1 again. And it has zeros uh, from time to time, and it goes on forever. If you use the sine function for a pendulum, for example, because the pendulum does exactly this, it goes from a minus 1 degree elongation to a plus minus uh, elongation and in the middle swings through the vertical uh, position that can exact can be easily uh, depicted by a sine curve but you actually won't see the sine curve and the sine curve has to do with circular motion as well you, or you can use it there and you won't see that sine thing anymore but uh, it will have its circling function for a circle if you want to use the sine curve for values, say, which are not negative, because in some cases you need that pulsating motion here or animation uh, with values which are only positive, you can do different things. Uh, one would be to write the function absolute of sine of time with, of course, two brackets. And um, it basically will create a curve which goes like this here. Let me change the color now. It go like this. And here, the absolute function would detect that it's going into the negative value, so it would go like this. It would be the same as the classical sign here, and then it would go like this. So that's the absolute uh, version. But you can um, well, here you have um, breakpoints where the timing goes a little bit harsh, which can be uh, good in some cases, but uh, you can um, just move the sine curve up like this. And then you have all, uh, all the positive values you, you, you want. For example, you can make it start at the height of 1, and then this would be, of course, 3. And the intermediate one would be 2. So it would be always uh, positive. And you do that with this function. You write sine of time, for example, or a frame or randomness. And um, the sine of time needs to be added to a number. That, that's that number here. 
that elongation here. Uh, so in this case, 1 plus sine. If you want to have it higher, you can put it to 10 plus sine of time. If you want the animation to go s faster or slow, you have to play with the time value. 2 times time or time divided by 3, for example. You could write in that that's the timing thing. And if you want the curves to be, let me choose a yellow here, or a greenish color, if you want the same frequency here, but you want them much higher, you would just multiply this. For example, 1, that makes it higher, or let's say 10 this time, we need it very high, plus, say, twice, two times uh, sign of time. So that's something abstract, but we will use it now, and we will use it for something really beautiful. So let's go to Maya and create, under polygon modeling, a plane. Actually, it's a disk. It doesn't matter for that purpose. We click here in order to uh, blank out the grid, and we click here in order to see the texture. We currently have only a gray texture. Now we go to the Attribute Editor and right mouse click here and we create a new material. And the new material in our case is a very simple material. It's a Lambert shader. It doesn't change a thing because the default Lambert is as gray as this one. But we will map the color. And the color can be mapped with lots of things and you can play with lots of things. But I, for a reason, I don't really know, like the grid. The grid is here. So I map it with the grid and you see the grid. If you hadn't clicked here, you wouldn't see the grid. So that's the crucial point here. So what we'll do now is we have the grid here in the attribute editor and right here you have the tab for placing that grid. Because that grid can be placed in many different ways. For example, you can repeat it in UV instead of 4x4, four 2x2 four, two two, or 2x20. Two so that's quite a difference here. And uh, you can offset it, uh, say, 0 0.2, 0, 0 0.2. So it moves in this direction. Um, and when you see that moving thing, you can already try to put in a function here. And you can type the function directly into that field here. So I select the 0 0.2 in the offset uh, U direction. That's the moving of this uh, big bar here into that direction. And now I can type in equals time. And I press enter. And what happens now is that these things move along that disk. You can make this move much faster if you like. Equals time. That would be the same speed. You see they move this direction now. Or you could type in equals minus 5 times time. So it moves in the other direction now, up here, and much faster. So it's quite an irritating movement. But I go back to time. So we have a slow motion, rather slow. Now I want to show you something about the noise here. The noise in UV is a very interesting parameter here. Let us check this value here. If you raise this from 0 to 0 0.2, you get this pattern, which is really cool, I guess. And now the animation looks like this. You can do the same randomness with this here, with the U value, for example, by typing in 1. That would be a very high random value. And then you get this animation. If you type in a sine function here, 
you need a positive value because the noise doesn't accept neg negative values. It's uh, minus one for a sine curve doesn't make sense. So we do that, what we just talked about. We type in equals and now we add say two plus sine of time. Now we have a swinging motion for the randomness. It's not obvious but of course it's there. It's quite a different animation to the one before. For example now we have a, a noise of 1.1. A little bit later we have a noise of 1.004. It will never uh, go below zero. If we want to see the sign clear we just delete the noise V value and see that sign working now. Let's extend the frame range to 500 frames to see the animation playing a little bit longer. And now I want to animate the rotation in UV. Let's check the slider here. This is what it does. It rotates the whole texture uh, landscape. And we can of course rotate this by equals time. And now let's go to the top view here and deselect our object. And now we have this wonderful animation. So basically, you can, this is only a starting point maybe, uh, but you can, with very simple mathematical functions you can change things drastically and in a very peculiar way. Try tweaking the sine function or the time function and you will get totally different results and if you get a little bit of a feeling for this you will easily manage to get very complex and very good looking textures.